Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Spoofy here with the car, guys. And first and foremost, I want to say Happy New Year to everybody. I just want to know one thing. Where the hell are the flying cars that we were told we were getting in 2014, 2015? Beats the hell out of me. But, um, <laughs> um, like I said, Happy New Year and everything. Hope you guys um, enjoyed uh, your little vacation from school and from work and whatever else you did. Um, so, bringing in the new year here, um, I, since, you know, this is January 1st now, I will be uploading this today, obviously. Um, we rejoice, Tengu fans. Um, I don't think you guys really understand. I'm really big Tengu, uh, Reborn Tengu advocate. I love it. Um, it's not as impactful as it has been in the past, but I'm coming to you today with a TG Stun deck profile. Um... I've been testing it for a little bit, off and on. It's fun. Um, it can compete. That's the thing. It can compete still. Um, you got to play a lot of stuff with it. But um, you know, just um, it's it's still a work in progress. Um, I've been testing with it a lot, and this is version 1.0. I might bring another one. Um, it's uh, it's been testing well so far, and um, you know, Clifford's it's a thing, but EM one's also a card. So pretty much, if they get um, they get a shell on the field, which is actually pretty funny. Um, I'll sit with a, fa a defense position monster, and then make and then pressure them in doing a shell play, and then EM wanting, and then just absolutely winning. So it's hilarious. Um, that's pretty much it. I want to go ahead and get into the list. Um, the list um, is pretty stand, well, not standard. There's a couple cards in here that um, I feel like is more of a meta call than anything else, but um, we'll get into it. Um, first off, we have double TG Striker. Um, TG Striker is the level two tuner of the deck. It's a warrior, um, and you can. It's a cyber dragon for the um, archetype. If your con opponent controls a monster and you don't, special summon it. Um, and these cards kind of flow in with each other. Um, back in the old days, you could you would be able to uh, do call the haunted plays with it and be able to special summon your war wolf, go Trish with the Tengu. It's it was pretty powerful. But um, right now, that's not the case. Um, now it's more of a slow, it was a slow, grindy game back in the day, and it still is, um, but you'll, you'll see that. Um, so we play three TG Warwolf. Um, Warwolf was my favorite one out of the three, um, just for the sole fact that you could, um, in the 2011 um, days, when you were playing plants and your opponent went lone fire, did whatever, you could special summon this while they went first and then have an extra card on the field to do pressure plays. Um, and it was very good. Um, and also it's a Horn of the Phantom Beast target, which we'll get into and everything. Um, and then we do play 3TG Rush Rhino. Um, Rush Rhino is a... A lot of people don't know this, a static effect. Um, when it attacks, it gains 400 attack after or during damage calculation. Um, so if you equip it with Horn of the Phantom Beast and attack, it's a 2800 monster. If they attack you, it's a 2400 monster. So either way, you'll get a draw and whatnot. Um, this, this deck is all about advantage. Um, advantage, advantage, advantage. And Horn gives you that advantage. You can draw all, into all your traps with it. And it just creates a whole bunch of outs that you your opponent may not see you have. Um, now, like I said, three Reborn Tengu. Um, it's a Horn target. Um, yes, you can search it with Tinky and everything, but I'm not playing Tinky in the deck, even though you can search like three other cards in the deck, or two, another card in the deck with it. But um, Tinku is very good just for the fact that it floats. Just like everything else in this deck, other than the last three, last three monsters I'm going to show you, everything in the deck floats. All eight, nine, so 11 of these monsters are floaters. And uh, that is very good. You get to search, um, search, 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 which is very good. Um, being able to. Uh, not lose any car control and being able to advance your game state is very good um, in today's meta to begin with. And um, yeah, three Reborn Tengu is pretty much a must in this deck. Um, then um, I personally play two Beast King Barbaros. Now this is one of the meta calls that I was talking about. Um, I do play Skill Drain in the deck because it does uh, semi hurt uh, Shadows in a way and then it could hurt um, Burning Abyss game one. So having a Beast King um, on the field that is a 3,000 3, attack is very good. And then on top of that, um, if you have a chalice set and they're trying to ram into it um, with, you know, whatever, like if you just have Barbaro set with a back row 
and your opponent summons a Dante and then attacks into it, you can chalice it, which I do take a chalice. Um, it goes up to 34 and it stays at 3,000. So that's broken. And then I decided to play one Thunder King. Uh, the reason why I decided to play one Thunder King, so I'm trying to see if this can focus. We're good to go. Um, I'll play the one Thunder King just for the Cliff Fort matchup. Uh, being able to open up this in the Cliff Fort matchup is very good. Like, their one out has to be, you know, sacrificing a monster or a Geki. Like, you have to have it. And um, I've noticed a lot of the time if I do open up this, they do have a, they do have a lot of trouble um, actually being able to do anything because you are accompanied by your three MSTs I'll show you in a minute. And having th opening up Thunder King MST is very good regardless because if they try to... Um, they try to, you know, summon a monster and sacrifice. You can just MST the sacrifice. They don't search, and it's so hard for them to do anything because Thunder King just shuts them down completely. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I believe it is um, 14 monsters altogether. Um, so you got 13 floaters and 3 really big medical cards in my opinion. Um, now for the spells, there are 10 of them. Uh, we do play three pot of duality. You want to dig into your deck. You want to get um, into your pieces that will um, advance your game state, help you win the match, um, win the game and whatnot. And so um, having duality is very good. You don't special summon at all unless you're going with a Tengu or you Dark Hole or you Torrential, which in that case, like, you wouldn't even play duality, so I believe three is good. Um, wanting to get into your pieces, I don't play upstart because I believe right now the traps are more important in this deck. I know Patrick says otherwise. We've had me and him had this discussion before, um, and he'll tell everybody he thinks upstart is better than uh, three traps you try to fit into a deck. But in this deck per se, the tr the traps are endless, and. Um, you can play a whole bunch of traps that actually benefit you in the long run. So I decided to play the traps over the upstarts, and I'm going to stick with it because it's been working very well. Um, then I do play three Mystical Space Typhoon. I think you have to right now. Um, TG's in the past used to play one to none, um, and now I believe it's mandatory to play three just because of... Um, if you go first and uh, against Burning Abyss, you might hit, be able to hit their Burning or uh, their Lake. You might be able to hit the Scout if you go first. Um, sacrifice, blah blah blah. You can have outs to cards like that. Um, it's easy side out game too if you have to side it out. So not horrible. Um, then for the one ofs, we play one Dark Hole. You do play a lot of um, floaters, so why not play Dark Hole? Um, then we play. One Book of Moon, one Regeki, and one Forbidden Chalice. Um, now, Forbidden Chalice is a, a tech of mine because um, it's an effect veiler. Since you do play a skill drain, you don't want to play hand traps at all. Uh, I don't believe hand traps in the main deck are that good now. Um, I will be side decking you know, maxis and whatnot, um, taking out skill drains versus some decks. But um, right now, Chalice, the one tech Chalice has been working very well. It might bump up to two. I'm not totally sure. Um, if I bumped up to three Barbaros, I'd probably play two Chalice. Out of all honesty. But um, it's been working out pretty well right now. Uh, like I said, that's ten spells altogether. Now, um, I'm not playing Snatch Deal, if you notice. Um, I'm not a big fan of Snatch Deal. That would more, more or less be in the side deck, um, if anything. But right now, I'm not the biggest fan of Snatch Deal. Um, so that's ten spells. And then we have, I believe, sixteen traps. Now, the trap of the whole deck. It's what makes the deck. It's probably one of my favorite trap cards ever, other than, like, Skill Drain. Um, is, and that's why I played the deck, uh, is because of this and Skill Drain. is three Horn of the Phantom Beast. Now, people that probably, if you just started playing a year ago or so, you really don't know what this card does. And I'll read it off for you. Go ahead and read it off verbatim here. Uh, target one Beast or Beast Warrior type monster you control. Um... Semicolon. Equip this card to that target. It gains 800 attack. When that target destroys an opponent's monster by balance into the graveyard, draw one card. Alright, so what you do is you summon a monster that's a beast or beast for an attack. Now, if the attack goes through and the um, damage has been dealt, you can uh, Horn of the Phantom Beast. Um, it gains 800. They'll take 800 more and then you'll draw a card. So when they have no response, you play Horn and you pretty much just plus so much and it's unreal like horn just creates so so many different ways you can play the deck and it forces your opponent to make unorthodox plays to get around so in burning abyss you know if you have a thunder king not a thunder king what am i talking about um 
a Beast King or a, um, or what am I trying to say? Reborn Tengu on the field. They want to get a monster that's bigger than that to get over it so I don't plus with Horn of the Phantom Beast. So um, it creates awkward plays where they're going to have to have the tour guide to do anything. And if they don't and they just have a whole bunch of Burning Abyss monsters in the hand, they literally can't play for a minute. And it's... I just like creating awkward situations for opponents. Um, that is probably one of the best ways to win in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is awkward situations. And um, and I'll say that a lot. Um, awkward situations pretty much help you solidify game a lot more than people think. And this is one of those cards that help do that. So play three of those. Um, next, play Triple D Prison. Now, um, Cliff Fort matchup is scary. And being able to remove from play the Cliff Fort um, cards is so beneficial. Um, I've actually main deck Triple D Prison for a while in a lot of decks, and um, all the Cliff Fort players hate me because I do draw into multiples. And since you are playing the Horn of the Phantom Beast, you will draw them a lot more than you think. And um, being able to horn on your opponent's turn, draw into this, and then being able to set it is absolutely insane. So I feel like three is necessary right now. Uh, then um, for more traps, um, play Double Skill Drain. I don't think three is um, that good right now. I just want to be able to um, pretty much stun a couple of decks. It's mainly for Rogue and uh, Shadal's um, Burning Abyss. Maybe um, if I have a Thunder or a Beast King on the field and uh, they ha go and like double Dante and try to hit over it when they attack, I can Skill Drain and then Chain Horn, draw a card, and they lose their monster. Um, it's pretty cute. Not gonna lie. Um, skill Drain is a very clutch card. I like it. It's cute. I'm going to probably keep it in. But if you guys suggest anything, I would love to try out any suggestions you guys have. Uh, now for the themed trap card of the deck. Uh, double EM1. Now I tested three. Three with uh, eight monsters didn't seem the best ratio. Um, but two seemed to be fine. I was thinking about manning the third. I could easily side it out. Not a problem. But um, right now, it's been working very well. Um, I was playing against um, um, somebody, and I had a... Um, the, the way this is ruled, um, you can target one TG monster that's actually face down as well. So, um, and the way it used to be ruled as well, um, if you em one while they declared an attack, the attack still went through. Which I don't think that is right, but um, either way, I would special sum. I special summon a striker, and he had a shell on or it's a shell. Yeah, it's a shell on the field or a disc. It was one of the two, and um, I em one uh, my striker with uh, his big monsters equipped with a sacrifice, and just won. It was amazing. Um, being able to put them in awkward situations, take their monster, and just do nutty stuff with it is absolutely. I'm the, I'm the biggest fan of that. It's amazing. Um, so, EM1 is probably one of the most disruptive cards um, right now. Being able to take any big boss monster and do something with it is very cool. Um, then I play Double um, Vanity's Emptiness. Now, um, this is a controversial card in my opinion right now. Um, Vanity's is more of that one turn stop play. Make them not be able to do one thing. Again, putting them in an awkward, posi awkward position. Game 1 against Burning Abyss is very good. This card is um, actually very, very, very good against Shadows as well. Um, being able to put uh, one of those two players in an awkward position um, while I have, you know, a Beast War on the field with a face down, um, <coughs> excuse me, one of the Phantom Beast is very good. So if they summon Tour Guide, um, I just pretty much win. If they have, don't have an answer for Vanities, I literally just have that Beast King on the field and then I just ram, horn, draw, and they cannot do anything. And so I have a big beater on the field, and they can't special summon that until they have an out. It's just amazing. So I think doubles vanities is uh, pretty works pretty well. Um, then for, I play four more traps uh, in the forms of one warning, um, one torrential, um, one compulse. Uh, compulse is actually very good, um, getting around some awkward situations that your opponent may give to you. And then a mirror force. Now, mirror force is not seen right now. Um, people do not expect it. And like I said, awkward positions, awkward situations put you in a better position than you actually think. And mirror force right now against cliff forts is very good. And that's one of the decks I'm worried about is cliff forts. And, um, being able to mirror force a um, Cliff Fort player 
or uh, being able to have a skill drain face up on the field, and then mirror forces should all players very good as well. Um, people really don't understand that um, when you do have control like you do. And Torrential's there just because all your monsters are floaters. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the extra deck is not very relevant. Um, you really go into it just you know, have an imagination, play uh, level 6 synchros, um, rank 4 monster or exceed monsters. Um, you, hell, you could play a Felgrand if you wanted to, um, just for shits and giggles. But, yeah, that is pretty much it for the deck profile. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I would love for you to play it, test it out. I Actually, there is a um, tournament tomorrow, um, about an hour away at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on um, New Year's Day. And my buddy Alex is actually wanting to um, go to it. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to go to it. And I'll more likely take this deck just to have fun. Um, hopefully I do well. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and I will probably end up changing deck maybe a little bit and... Um, you know, going over and uh, having a couple duels with it. So, just in case you guys do like this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you thumbs up the video. Um, if you dislike the video, please like it. You know, <laughs> um, comment, subscribe, show me feedback. I would love to know what you're liking about the channel, what you're not liking about the channel, what I can do differently. Um, with the channel. Um, ARG Orlando is this weekend and I plan on having a lot of videos come out this weekend. Um, we're going to um, probably do live coverage on the YouTube channel um, just in case you want um, updates on certain players I can have interviews with them and stuff like that so me and Alex will definitely be on the grind with that we're gonna be um, recording feature matches as well so we'll have a lot of feature matches come up on the channel but that's pretty much it for me today guys um, I do hope you enjoyed it um, and happy new year again from everybody at the card guys and uh, we will see you later peace